What's cooking, y'all? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to define pivot variables and free variables and continue refining the way that we talk about solutions to general linear systems problems. Recall our first toy example with an integer 3 by 5 matrix and an integer 3 by 1 right-hand side vector. When we were solving this problem, we used elementary row operations to transform into the equivalent ux equal y special system. In this case, we saw that pivot element 1 was in pivot position 2, comma, 1. Pivot element 2 was in pivot position 1, comma, 3. And those mapped down onto rows 1 and 2 with a permutation. Recall also that working with the linear systems problem ax equal b is equivalent to working with the linear systems problem ux equal y from the standpoint of our solutions. With that in mind, in order to generate a complete solution as a particular solution plus some linear combination of special trivial solutions, we used the structure of our RREF matrix U to elicit exactly what this should look like. Here's where I want to really combine our fluency and skills in linear algebra. If we actually break down what the u times x variable linear combination looks like, the individual columns of u, column 1 of u, column 2 of u, column 3 of u, 4, 5, get paired up with the rows of the vector x. In other words, I take a linear combination of the columns of u using the individual scalars in the vector x. And that leads to a five term linear combination where the first column of u gets matched with the scalar x1, the second column gets matched with the scalar x2, x3, x4, x5. But what I want to say here is notice that the variables in x get matched with the columns of u. And we can start to make this direct translation between variables that get mapped to pivot columns of u, and then variables that get mapped to non-pivot columns of u. And in fact, we've done that here. x1 we've highlighted in blue because it matches with a blue pivot variable, x2 in orange because it matches with a orange non-pivot variable. That very simple observation leads to some definitions that we'll use to discuss the individual entries of the vector x with respect to the structure of the matrix A. Specifically, we define pivot variables of our vector x as the individual entries in x that correspond to the pivot columns of A when we think about A times x as linear combinations of the columns of A. Because the columns of A map very nicely onto the columns of U, we can use the stair-step structure of RREF to identify, hey, X1 is going to be a pivot variable, so is X3. This immediately gives rise to the observation that when we have our pivot variables, those linearly independent columns give rise to a unique particular solution, assuming that we do not take the other non-pivot variables into consideration. And then we have these extra pieces of information that have no constraints. If we take a look at row two of this equation, we see that x2 is going to be equal to 0 plus c1 plus 0 plus 0. In other words, x2 is equal to c1. We have full choice of what that c1 is. It's any constant. In other words, we are free to choose x2. That is a free variable. Same thing over here. The fourth row of this equation, x4 is 0 plus 0 plus c2 plus 0, we are free to choose what c2 is. In fact, x4 is a free variable. This leads us to the second half of our new definitions. Free variables in our vector x are the entries of x that correspond to non-pivot columns. I would also like a synonym for this to be non-pivot variables. That's another way to say it. The reason that mathematicians in the past have called these free is because we're literally free to choose the different values of the constant c1, c2, c3. Now, this gets into kind of a personal pet peeve of mine. I don't like the fact that we're introducing new constants c1, c2, c3. And in fact, in these equations, x2 is equal to c1, 
x4 is equal to c2, x5 is equal to c3. To me, that's stupid. Why are we introducing these new variables? The point of this is these are unknown variables. Why don't we just keep them to have the same values? x2 is x2, I'm free to choose that. That's a free variable. x4 is x4, there's no constraint on that variable. I'm free to choose x4 to whatever I want. And the same thing with x5. When we do that, we immediately see, hey, these are free to choose, those are free variables. We are not free to choose x1 and x3 because those are constrained by the right-hand side vector b or y, depending on which of those systems I look on. Those must be pivot variables. In the parlance of our new definitions, when we look at our toy example one linear systems problem, we see that we have two pivot variables and those correspond with the two pivot columns, x1 and x3. And we see we have three free variables, ones that we are free to choose, which are x2, x4, and x5. Three plus two is five, that's the total number of columns, corresponds with our previous observation. Because repetition is so powerful in learning, let's filter these definitions through our second toy example. In our second toy example, we had AX equal to B. We see that pivot columns one, three, and six corresponded to variables one, three, and six in X. We call those pivot variables. Non-pivot columns two, four, five, and seven corresponded to non-pivot variables two, four, five, and seven. Each individual scalar of x get mapped to the appropriate column of u, x1 times u1, the first column, x2 times u2, the second column, x3 times u3, the third column, all the way down to the last column. And we see there's this really, really nice connection between the pivot variables and the pivot columns and the free variables and the non-pivot columns. Once again, the reason that we use the word free is because we are free to choose any scalar times that first special trivial solution any other scalar, we're free to choose whatever we'd like, times the second special solution, third free variable, we can choose anything we'd like in that position, and also fourth. This is where yours truly gets a little bit cranky. You kids, get off my yard with those C1, C2s, and C3s. Why not, if we're gonna use those variables as free variables, just replace them with x2. Don't introduce new notation, just use the same notation that's hidden inside the vector. Here we see the pivot variables are x1, x3, and x6. The free variables, the ones we're free to choose, are x2, x4, x5, and x7. Which means that when we look at our original system, we have r equals three pivot variables corresponding to the three pivot columns, and we have f equal four non-pivot variables, free variables, corresponding to the four non-pivot columns. Three plus four is seven. There are indeed seven columns of this matrix. More generally, anytime we're looking at a general linear systems with m rows and n columns, we can partition the individual entries of the vector x, depending on whether or not those entries map to pivot columns, we call those entries pivot variables, or if those entries map to non-pivot columns, we should call those non-pivot variables. Because we are free to choose those when we take linear combinations of the special trivial solutions, we also call those free variables. Those two technical terms allow us to talk about features in the vector x with respect to the structure of the matrix A. In the next video, we'll apply all these new terms and some of the techniques we saw earlier in this lesson to look at an applied linear systems problem. I'll see you there.